what a glorious image looking at the Adelaide Central Business District and all the wonderful features in and around this great city in South Australia. It's been a very big week for South Aussies and everybody in and around Adelaide in this past week. In fact, the Fringe Festival's on here as well at the moment. It's a very, very exciting time and we're going to have a ripping race this afternoon. In fact, two of them, 125 k's. Just a few moments ago, celebrating a very big moment in the history of V8 supercars and indeed Australian motorsport because Craig Lowndes, more event starts than any other driver in history and a remarkable list of achievements along the way. It certainly was. Crowd loved it. That crowd. <laughs> look at the reaction. So let's have a look at the theatre that we play in this afternoon, Mark Scape, a little over three kilometres around the Adelaide Parkland circuit. It is a fantastic mix of fast and slow corners, Neil. Past chicane leading up Wakefield Street to turn four. Bad bumps on the way in there. 14 turns in total. 90 degree corners leading out of turn seven and the great run up. 245 kilometres an hour. Top speed into the infamous turn eight down to the slowest turn 60 kilometers an hour best passing spot on the track at turn nine tricky turn 11 leading up again to another fast section turn 13 into the start finish straight average speed 144 kilometers an hour there your sectors but this is a great street circuit one end of the track is almost permanent the other end is a typical street circuit with all the bumps and curves and road profile changes that we've come to expect and this place turns it on. We are going to talk a lot this afternoon about the heat out there because it's on forecast top in Adelaide this afternoon is 39 degrees. Cockpit temperatures are going to soar. The track temperature is going to be well up and soft tyres on the car. Dunlop soft tyre for the first of the two events and then later this afternoon, potentially in slightly cooler conditions, they'll have the Dunlop hard tyre on as well. It'll be a very busy afternoon in and around the pit lane and on the grid. Let's get down to Rihanna. Scott Pye, this is a big moment in your V8 Supercars career. Are you allowing yourself to soak any of the atmosphere? Uh, I don't think it will really sink in anyway until I'm sitting here with no other cars in front of me ready to go. So feel really prepared, looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, I just want to keep this 17 car in front and have a good clean race. Everyone today has been talking about the temperature of the weather and how hot it's going to be in the car. Has that been a concern for you at all? Not a concern, it's just something we're going to have to deal with. We all know that at some point this race is going to become difficult. and. Today's good though, I mean, it's, it's, they've separated obviously the format now, it's 2125, so it's a lot easier than it used to be. It's not, I'd be a lot more nervous if I was rolling into the 250k today, but just looking forward to this one, blow the cobwebs out and um, hopefully stand on the, on the podium at some point in this, this race. It's big to start from pole position, so enjoy, good luck. Cheers, thank you. He got there by nine one hundredths of a second, Scott Pye over Jamie Wincup, who's got two front row starts today in the Red Bull Racing Holden Commodore, but a big moment for Dick Johnson Racing, Team Penske, their first pole position in that new group. It's been expanded to two cars in this new season. Scotty Pye has started on the second row, position three, I think three times in his V8 supercar career before this weekend, so a hallmark moment for him yesterday, and he just, he blew up on the radio with so much excitement. <laughs> pole position, and it was an awesome achievement. 26 entries, huge change in the lineup for this year, more than half the field. It'll be a tough act to beat because last year we had 10 different drivers achieving a pole position when you include Paul Dumbrell because two drivers contribute to the Sandown pole. Nine different drivers won a race, 16 drivers earned a podium last year, Scafie. 238 points was the margin in the final analysis. Not a lot in it and a real seesaw through the year because initially ProDrive didn't get off to a great start. Then we went through the winter bottom era and then the back end of the year, Wing Cup was so strong. Let's get back downstairs. Oh, Chess Monster, what a day here in Adelaide. I don't know if I recall one being this warm, to be honest. But hey, mate, haven't spoken to you, but that was just a sensational job yesterday for race two. But a little bit further back for this one, you sort of missed the, the timing a little bit yesterday for the, for the soft tie. Yeah, back to school today, starting 12. Uh, yeah, just missed our second lap on the softs. We really needed that. We didn't quite get the tie temperature up for the first one. So, yeah, you know, it's still not a bad result starting 12. Got a bit of work to do, but, you know, I'll be happy even if we finish around here for the first race of the year. Uh, P3, uh, practice three this morning. What were you guys working on? Were you trying to improve? Uh, just trying to make the overall balance of the car be better on the soft. Obviously, the hard felt really good. I didn't, don't think we were quick enough to be P1 in this first qualifying. So, um, yeah, just working on that and, and obviously trying to make the tyres lift. Hey, mate, have a great day. Thanks very much. Jonathan Webb has the umbrella up, trying to keep his techno driver, Will Davison, cool. How is this whole new environment? 
Uh, listen, it's been been really good. We've had an awesome six weeks leading up to here, and I'm uh, yeah loving loving the new environment. It's uh, Really, really great group of guys, very focused, very organised and um, having a lot of fun. Obviously, it's game time now and uh, I think we're settling in pretty well. When you are in this moment here, I know it's about keeping cool at, at present, but what's going through your mind? A oh, fair bit. Uh, Christmas feels like a long time ago. <laughs> Homebush feels like yesterday, but uh, obviously a lot of change. And uh, you know, Obviously, we're racing now. We're going for it. It starts now, but uh, we've still got a lot of learning to do over the course of today and the weekend. So, obviously, you, you want to keep it clean, but uh, we obviously just want to keep uh, settling into this car. And I can feel the potential in this package. It's, it's going to be a rocket when I gel with it. We know you'll make the most of it. Thanks. Can't wait. Cheers. Cheers thanks. Will Davison there. And... Uh, it's going to be an interesting afternoon for him. He's had success at this location before. Big change for him. Whole new deal. New group of people around him. Totally new car. Big expectations. Isn't that a fantastic scene looking down on the grid? Very, very busy time there at the moment. The drivers will be doing everything in their power to try and stay cool. That's going to be a key talking point this afternoon. I'm worried about the way in which these tyres will match to the road today because of these elevated temperatures. That adds to the intrigue of what's going to come. It will be 39 laps around here, 125 kilometres, and then we'll back up and do it all again later on this afternoon. I want to get into more of the detail surrounding this event now, and on that topic, let's get down to our Hino Hub for the first time in 2016. Here's Greg Murphy. We are very fortunate here in this V8 Supercar Championship to visit some amazing racetracks and events. None so more exciting than right here in Adelaide for the Clipsal 500. And in our brand new Hino Hub, we'll just take a, a brief look at this track and highlight one area of it that stands out above all others. That is Turn 8, maybe the most treacherous corner in V8s in Australian motorsport, uh, potentially. So Turn 8, taking it over 200 k's an hour, demands respect, rewards some bravery, but there's plenty of people that have got it wrong over the years, including myself. So let's just take a look at some of those instances. Jason Barguana hitting the fence in the Orcon Ford, doing plenty of damage, losing the rear end through this high-speed HRT car in the fence, followed in. Oh, by a couple more, but Jason Bright, who gets it wrong, probably some oil on the circuit at that time to create this amount of carnage. But debris everywhere in the wet. Lee Holdsworth gets into the fence, runs a little bit wide, probably turned in a bit late. Again, a Lucas Dumbrell motorsport car on the wet line, finding himself hard up against the concrete, doing the damage. Wow, Will Davison tearing the Erebus Motorsport V8 car apart against the concrete as well. And this one, 12 months ago, whew, lucky to get away with... Only that kind of damage was Chaz Molstert clipping the inside kerb and sending him into the fence. This is my least favourite. Here's me in the super cheap car back in 2006. Paul Dumbrell on the inside, stayed out there too long. Into the marbles, into the fence. I was joined by my mate Mark Scaife. Scaifey, what were you doing? Can't understand that one. I think you blame me for that though, but it was nice of you to come up and make sure I was okay. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> God, you, you have to respond to that. It's well, not my problem. He's pointing I, at you. I went up to see him because I wasn't too happy. But when I got there, he was asleep. <laughs> he was asleep. He was actually knocked out. He's having a little nap. <laughs> Moving along. Let's get to Rihanna. Shane Van Gisberg, and we saw earlier in the weekend you were suffering with a bit of creature comfort in the new car at Red Bull Racing Australia. Have you managed to get that sorted? Yeah, now I've got the flu, so this race is going to suck, but uh, feels all right. The car's very different to what I'm used to, so still trying to get it to my liking, and I felt all right at the test day, but come to a track like this, it's completely different, so it's like starting again, and, and, and the way it is with this racing, you don't get much practice, and no excuses, I just didn't get it right. I'm not comfortable in the car yet, so hopefully after today's races, I'll be right for tomorrow, but but fifth and sixth isn't bad for not liking the car, so it's only up from here, I think. I hope you're feeling okay in the car. Good luck. Yeah, I think I'll get rid of the flu after today. I'll sweat it all out. Thanks, Shane. All right. Might look like over summer that he's developed a 10-pack or something along those lines. Lee Holdsworth, this is an important part of keeping cool before we get going here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it's, you want to keep as cool as we can before the race because we're going to get super hot out there. Fortunately, we've got a little bit of cloud cover, which is nice, just to block the sun out. It's actually not too bad in the shade, but in the sun, it's a killer. So, mate, it's going to be a long race. Um, you know, everyone goes stupid in the first race of the year. So we just want to keep out of trouble and you know, end up with some good points and get a better knowledge of this car and, mate, just keep moving forward. Can you give us a sense, without giving away specifics, of how you might play this? Uh, 
yeah, I mean, I, you know, first first race in, you want to play it a little bit conservative, but also you got to, you know, identify when the, uh, the passes are on, on offer to you. So, yeah, the, the the start is obviously the most important time um, to to make places. So I'll be going hard on the first couple of laps, and then uh, hopefully settle into a, a bit of a rhythm. These soft tyres aren't going to last long in this sort of weather, so we're going to have to um, play the long game. Go get them. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Lee Holdsworth there. And there were so many of that team. Jason Bush, ex-HRT, Jeff Greck, back from six, seven years, not involved in the industry. He's looking after that team. And uh, a guy that used to work for Peter Brock, George Smith, was also in the background there. So there's some, some great chemistry amongst that group. One car team, very much replicating the techno example with Triple Eight equipment and a single car. So let's see how Lee Holdsworth approaches this I spoke to them a little while ago and he just said, look, I'm going to be real conservative. Just make sure I get to about mid-race distance. Everybody's pioneering based on the soft tyre. No one knows how the soft tyre is going to hang in. And a lot of people are going to be conservative as a consequence. That kerb will be a talking point. It always is every time we come here. There's a track limits issue there. You can't have all four wheels and tyres to the right of the track defining limits there. It's monitored electronically. The drivers will be giving or getting warnings if they transgress and then ultimately can be shown a bad sportsmanship flag. And if they get it wrong, they will get drive-through penalties. It's something that's going to have to be very carefully managed this afternoon. So a little bit of cloud cover, as Lee Holdsworth was describing before, that will certainly help the cause. For so long, we have been used to seeing Rick Kelly's Nissan Altima in black and white colours. Now, Senglet's come on board, red and white colours for you, and a great job right beside Todd Kelly here, your brother, <laughs> getting ready for the first race of the year. It's always an awkward moment starting in the Clips of 500 next to your brother, trying to fight down for turn one for pit priority. But I'm really excited. It's probably the most excited I've been heading into Clips with Singlet on board. It's a, it's a fresh start for us after a number of years, like you said, in, in black and white. So we're pretty pumped. Just want to try and make the most out of today. Very different day here on the side. Off compound tyre. No one really knows how it's going to last for that duration, so we'll see. You won here on the Sunday in 2007. Three visits to the podium. What's the key to doing it right at Clipsal? I think trying to sort of maximise the Sunday event, like 250 k's around here is so long, particularly when you've got to back it up from the Saturday in the heat like this. So that's going to be the key tomorrow, I think. We've got sweat coming out. Perfect hair. Unbelievable. <laughs> Scott McLaughlin, it's starting to warm up just as you guys are about to get in the car. Yeah, it is. I'd say tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, uh, next race is probably going to be the hottest. But um, yeah, this is tough. The sun's coming out and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a pretty tough race. This place, however, has always been kind to you. You've always had really fantastic results. Yeah, the cars that I've driven around here has been awesome. So I think uh, I've been very lucky in that regard. And the boys behind me are great pit stops as well. I have great pit stops. So I'll just go do the job now. I'm the guy between the steering wheel and the seat and I'll see how we go. Got the eyes on you. Want to get in. Good luck. Cheers. Thanks. It was odd yesterday because Scotty McLaughlin described his qualifying for race number one as quote unquote I sprayed it mm. but he missed out by just a little over a tenth of a second so uh, it goes to that point we made a little bit earlier about just how tight it is year on year and if you when a tenth of a second has those sorts of implications I mean, as you go up and down the pit lane everybody's got a story to tell about what could have been oh, I locked up here I missed the apex there and, and that's the difference but that's just how tight it is head and neck support device there up on the roof of the car. This is Jamie Wincup. Boy, has he got some success against his name here. He comes to this racetrack with such astonishing credentials. Balked in qualifying for race number one. Still starts from the front row of the grid, and he'll do the exact same thing in the next race as well. And there's the bloke that last year he had a big, big battle with. Mark Winterbottom, number one plate on the car. Bottolo Racing Colours for 2016. Uh, Mike Winterbottom, here it is. It's about to begin again. I know you guys have been uh, getting ready for this. You've been in a lot of important training. It's turned out even more important considering how hot it is here today, but great starting position, really. I know you'd like to be further up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Um, the, heat's, the heat's here. It's actually a bit cooler than what they predicted, which it's funny when you're saying 32 degrees is, is cool, but um, it's good. Uh, we've trained hard. Um, it's going to hurt. No, no, no lying about it. It's going to hurt, but... Uh, uh, we're all pretty fit, so it should be okay, but yeah, we're in a good position. It feels like we're off three, but we're actually off four. It's kind of bizarre, the starting positions here, so first start of the year is always a nervous one. Yeah, it is always a nervous one, but uh, you've done it plenty of times. It's just that recovery too, isn't it? I mean, you've got another one uh, 39 laps this afternoon, but it's then recovering from that to get ready for an even longer day tomorrow. Yeah, well, it used to be easier, I think, having two races, one each day, because you get the pain out of the way, go recover, but now 
we finish this race, come in, chat to the engineers, get pulled from pillar to post, and then uh, try and recover for the next one. It is tough, but everyone's in the same boat, so it's all good. Yes, they are. Go, go get them. Thanks, mate. Over the years, we've seen some unbelievable races. We've seen some incredible moments. And after the race, the celebrations. What about Frank the Tank? Are we going to see him again this year? We hope so. Mate, if we don't, I'm in a lot of trouble. But uh, look, I love street circuits, and there's no better way to start our championship than at this place. We have 300, over 300,000 people come out, out to this place. The atmosphere is unbelievable. And uh, pretty good car race too, mate. <laughs> James Courtney, a lot of talk about the soft tyre today. What, what, do you, what have you learnt coming in, and how do you think you'll tackle it? Uh, probably didn't yield the uh, advantages we thought, so uh, deterioration is going to be a big thing today to see how that plans out, but it's, uh, it's going to be quite a strategic race. Uh, someone can pick quite early and force the field to the whole field to pit early, but it's, uh, it's going to be a long run home, and then obviously we've got to back it up as well with all the heat in the afternoon, so it's going to be a scorcher of a day, but uh, let's hope we put on some good racing for you Enjoy. guys at home. Enjoy. Cheers, mate. James Courtney. Obviously, Feb, a uh, big change for you over the, the break, as we've all been documenting all the way through the first couple of days here at the Clips of 500. The little idio idiosyncrasies between cars, I mean, the, the chassis and all that are all sort of very, very similar, but the teams have got a bit of a free play on lots of parts of it. What are you finding with this car versus what you drove last year that you've got to get used to? It's certainly uh, different to what I'm used to. Obviously, I have to have, adapt my driving style. You know, the drive of this car is very good, and you know, whereas it was reversed for the other, the other car. So, you know, I'm just getting my head around it, you know, trying to uh, dial it in and make it to my liking as quick as I can. But, you know, it's going to take time, and I've had four years driving a different car, and, you know, it's, like I say, it's just going to take time for me to get used to it. Yeah, hey, uh, but you've got a good teammate, though, too, this year. You know, you're working with the guys close together, two cars out there for DJ Team Penske trying to get the job done, and that's going to obviously speed things up for you. 100%. You know, I said to Scott in the, in the truck yesterday, I said, look, this, this time last year, if you were down here, you would have gone, you know, how and why. But, you know, for me, knowing that Scott's on P1, it's, um, it's comforting. I know the car's right, and I just need to adapt my style to make it work. I'm sure you will, mate. You've got the, got the goods to do it. Have a good day. Cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> Temperature uh, report, air is 39, track is now 43 wow. degrees out there. So even just in the last 10 or 15 minutes, it's really started to bump up as Jamie Wincup prepares for battle this afternoon. Ty's just at the V pillar at the right hand side there about to put up the driver's window net. And then there's just that moment in there where you're on your own. Uh, when you're on your own, it's just an opportunity to sit there and think about it. You've got the cool suit happening. So it all feels quite nice at that point because all the noise has stopped. Nobody's talking to you. Chance to think about the job because it's not just a question of driving the cars here. It's all the commercial aspects and the technical aspects that the boys have been flat out during the week. On the subject of flat out, I want to take you for a hot lap around here for a guy who's ultimately perfectly qualified. Let's join Mark Winterbottom for the GoPro hot lap. OK, welcome aboard car number one. That's not to say the bottle low PRA Falcon for a Clipsal. First race of the year, this place is awesome. Let's go for a lap. We have cameras absolutely everywhere, thanks to GoPro. Hard into one, fourth gear. We're going to use lots of curves there, not to get a strike, but use as much as you can. Let's go up to turn four. Four, third, back to second. Big bump there. Trying not to look the tyre. We'll just give me a second here. It's pretty damn busy. Well, a bit of a front. Enemy territory, too much holding. What's with these holding signs? Let's get the Ford out here. Up into turn six. Over the curb, go wide. Big exit here. This is the back straight. Turn, whoa, turn seven, bit of oversteer, hard on the gas. And up to notorious turn eight. Let's go through the gears. Just sit back and have a listen to this. Let's not go in too deep. Try and get on the gas. She's pushing up against the fence. That is a really cool corner. All the way back to the gearbox now. Into the first. Trying not to lock the rears. And then a bit of oversteer. Oh, next, a little bit of oil on the track there. It turned nine, which is a bit tricky. Over the curb at 11. Up against the fence. Trying not to hit the fence. That little edge when you rejoin the track at 13 is pretty sketchy. And now into the last corner. Hard on the brakes. On camber. A little bit of push here. But the car drives out really nice. That's Flipsal. It is seriously tough. Hot day, 70 degrees in the cabin. I feel sorry for us. It's going to be bloody, bloody hot. Thanks, guys. Mark Winterbottom, what a great lap. Last year, 
incredible performance for three armor all pole positions and he converted to nine victories unbelievable joining Paul Martin as our race starter for 2016 to be the South Australian Minister for Investment and Trade. Martin Hamilton Smith is going to be up there on the rostrum as well. It's great to have such wonderful support from South Australia and the City of Adelaide as the field is moved away. Really relishing the prospect of all of this getting underway once again, Mark Scape. Let's have a look at our race one starting grid. And from the pole, it will be Scott Pye and Jamie Wincup. Ford versus Holden on the second row. It will be Volvo versus Falcon, McLaughlin and Winterbottom. Then it's James Courtney, Shane Van Gisbergen. And you heard Shane say before, not entirely comfortable at the moment. The Kelly brothers will duke it out from position seven and eight. The Nissan Aldemars and Richard Emery, the managing director of Nissan, is here watching this weekend. And then alongside, we'll have uh, Garth Tanner and Will Davison, old foes. Craig Lowndes and Chaz Mostert will do battle. Fabian Coulthard, new team for him alongside Michael Caruso. Cam Waters in the Monster Energy entry together with David Reynolds, who's moved teams for 2016. Jason Bright and Tim Slade. Brad Jones racing entries for Team BOC and Freightliner. Preston Hire, Lee Holdsworth and James Moffat for Gary Rogers and Wilson Security. Nick Perkat and Chris Piffer, SP Tools and Super Black Racing. Then Dale Wood and Andre Heimgartner followed by Tim Blanchard, who's also moved teams and a very big moment for Aaron Russell. 26 starters in all. And you just know, Neil, on the warm-up lap that you've got to get your head down. This is one of the most physical racetracks. The conditions are hot, we know that. You've got to get your brain around how you warm the tyre, you have the brake pedal nice and high, brake temperatures up, you've got yourself composed. You know that this is going to be a war today. To get through these two races in these conditions, first event of the year, huge fitness, and at the moment, no race miles. There's no match fitness at this point. A couple of guys have done the 12 hour, but nobody's had much in the way of V8 supercar kilometers. One test day at Queensland Raceway, one test day at Winton Raceway for the respective Queensland and Victorian teams. Big moment. Compulsory pit stop in this race. They're on the soft tyre. Managing that tyre, it's life and longevity. And the point where you blink, where you come in to potentially grab the undercut and make advantage, that's going to be the interesting one. Will people react to safety cars if something happens? How is it going to be played? Coming into the final corner now, Scott Pye, car number 17. Dick Johnson Racing, Shell Helix. The last Dick Johnson Racing polls, James Courtney back in 2010. So finally... Our long summer wait is over. Well, I can see you, Cromley, and you, Scapey, up in your air-conditioned comm box. I'm down here in my race suit, standing on the grid, dealing with this temperature. All these guys know how important it is, all that training in the off-season, to pay off for something like this. It is stinking hot down here. I don't know how we did in the past, you boys. We didn't have cool suits, none of that kind of stuff. I tell you, we must have been some sort of men. This guy here, Scott Pye, on pole position, the 58th pole winner in this championship it is a very very important moment for these guys looking forward to see what happens but the guy next to him he knows how to get down to turn one very very smartly so the race is on at the front teams have had three months to regroup last year was defined by a heavyweight battle we've got 6,000 kilometers of action to come and history points to a guarantee of every single emotion spine tingling highs and incredible drops into second, McLaughlin into third, Winterbottom is fourth as they thread their way through one, two and three on lap one. Nice start, Jamie Wincup, great conversion off the line. That was a great start, minimal wheel spin, got the car moving, but also a very good start for McLaughlin and for Winterbottom. A lot of drama through turn three for Courtney and Van Gisbergen and Rick Kelly, lots of pressure to get down the inside at turn six on Shane Van Gisbergen. So now, out of seven, compose yourself, have a breathe, get organised, because this is the first time on cold tyres for turn eight. Wink up leads from Pye, McLaughlin, Winterbottom, Courtney, Van Gisbergen, Rick Kelly, Todd Kelly, Garth Tander and Will Davison. All through safely. This is where moves are made on the opening lap. There are very few opportunities to pull quick, clean, surgical moves and often they're attempted at this point in the race. 
great hole shot, Jamie Winkup. Look at the margin. And it's almost a similar gap then back to McLaughlin. Courtney having a peep down the inside of Winterbottom. We've banked the first 3.2 kilometres of 2016 relatively cleanly. David Couchy straight on the radio to Jamie Winkup when he come onto the start pretty straight. Eyes forward now, eyes forward now. Meaning, let's not have a look in the mirror, let's get on with this now. And the really interesting part, remember, we're on the soft tyre for the first time in history on the streets of Adelaide. So no one knows the longevity of this tyre. No one knows what sort of degradation you can expect. And the conditions are hotter than they were earlier today when we saw them do some laps in practice three. So you've got to minimise the wheel spin, minimise the sliding, and what lap time will they try to play to? Some will be conservative, some will press on hard. Three quarters of a second is the margin, wind cup over pie. So that's a nice cushion to start with. Different people have got different ideas about their starting pressures. Tander down the inside here of Todd Kelly. Diagonals to the apex and it's got to give a little bit of room on the exit. They'll be side to side as they run through 10. And then, oh, oh contact into 11. Upset the back of the Nissan, but Garth just banned the throttle and thought about it, then it had to get out. They've got plenty of history, these two guys. Neil, Garth Tander and Todd Kelly, and Tander down the inside at turn 13. That's a good move. And Will Davison will be ideally positioned to get a little gain out of this as well. He'll get a better corner exit. Todd will not let go on this one. We're on board. Run to turn one. He's got the ideal line. He sneaks back by. What a great exchange. He's crossed up through the chicane. Todd Kelly. Watch for Tandon make a lunge down the inside now at turn four. Lowndes is lurking as well. It's very dirty down the inside. How's the battle pack here? Look at them. Nose to tail. There's half a dozen or more cars. How is it? So they're being very... They've all been warned on the radio at the moment about being patient in behind Todd and Garth. The message to Will Davison was someone's going to end up in the fence here. So, as Neil said, big lineup. Will Davison, Kelly, Caruso, they're all battling in behind there. Moston, Coulthard, Dave Reynolds. All line astern in behind Todd Kelly and Garth Tander. What was encouraging out of that little battle with Todd? Number one, he didn't give it away, but the engine speed out of the hairpin on the start finish straight, he actually drove back by the HRT car. So a serious engine improvement there for the Nissan Altimus, Murph. Yeah, boys, I'm just watching the, the start of that race and watching Jamie Wincup lap one in front, cold tyres. His commitment through turn eight was phenomenal. And he got so close to the wall, closer than anyone else. And he was leading the race. So that's what sets it apart. The, the ex-champion and the difference he can put on when he, when he has to. It's a phenomenal thing to watch. It's got almost one second on the field now, Murph, over Scott Pye. And he gained most of the value out of that from the leap away from the line and that first part of the cold tyre lap. Eyes were on. And you're right, the way in which he got through eight was astonishing considering that uh, you don't really know what you've got because the conditions will have changed enormously since the practice three which was effectively a warm-up earlier today he's very good through there what about his save last year <laughs> i mean that was a 220 kilometer slide with a left-hand rear tire deflated he got right through the corner without hitting the fence it was the save of the year for jamie winker at this spot up here just in front riding with lounge looking at the back of the techno water auto sports daryl lee sticks entry of will davison Eight, Lowndes, out of the throttle, little break, back on with it. Right behind him, Michael Caruso, who was fastest in practice three, spoke to him after, said the balance of the car was awesome. Here's the replay from above. How is that hole shot for Jamie Winkup? It was awesome. And Scott Pye had to pretty aggressively cover McLaughlin to get down into one cleanly. And uh, unusual for everybody to get through that first chicane relatively cleanly. Now we ride with Lowndes. Will Davison is on the left of screen. And he's battling here with Garth, Town, uh, Garth Tander. A little bump. And uh, no space there for Garth, who had to leap over the curb. Tries to force the issue down the inside. Such a hard thing to do when the track is dirty on the extreme inside. Look at Will running very wide there. He had to try and throw it in deep to keep Garth at bay, but he lost the position in any case. He only just got away with that too, didn't he? Mm. Up the turn six. Oh, there was some trouble for Lee Holdsworth turned around. So I spoke too soon about the relatively clean start. This is Scott Pye. You can just see there, 
direction. Just bogged slightly. It did, it just bogged slightly, and the second phase of the start in particular was very good for Wink Cup. Minimised the wheel spin and got away there. There's Adam Debore in the centre. Tim Sindrick, the head of the Pinsky Racing Organisation, he's here this weekend. And the front guys have settled down a little bit now. The gap is 0.7, so Pai has just closed that gap a little bit as Fabian Coulthard fires down the inside of Caruso at turn nine. Hearing that Lowndes may well be in. He'll be sharing a pit boom alongside the Techno Auto Sports entry of Will Davison. So see whether or not Lowndes pulls to the right here for pit lane entry. And he's in. Mostert's going with him too, Neil. So this is a pretty early call, which means that they'll do a long run now on the second set of soft tyres. Okay, mate. What they may choose to do is only put two tyres on. You save two seconds by only putting the rear tyres on. Spot on, Scapey. Just the two tyres for Lowndes. Quick splash of fuel. Smooth. Both very good stops there, Rusty. That was a beautiful stop by both those teams. You'd expect that from Triple Eight and Pro Drive. Clean air advantage here as well. Back to our leaders, and the margin at the moment is 1.17 seconds officially between Jamie Winkup, car number 88, car number 17, Scott Pye, and then it's a similar margin, 0.98 of a second, back to Scotty McLaughlin. So things are calm in that first group, and then it's very intense in that next battle pack that involves those cars around position four, really through to ten or more. James Moffat, his first appearance in the factory Volvo squad. After being in the Nissan factory team, just behind him is Chris Pither in the fourth of the Pro Drive Falcons. So, best lap of the race just achieved by Jamie Wincup. 1 minute 21.57 as Jason Bright, I think it was, just peeled in from 18th position. Team BOC entry. This is a brand new car. Remember to keep your foot on the brake during the stop. Foot on the brake during the stop. Chris Clark, car controller. Rears only. Go, go, go. Oh, stalled it. Stalled. All right, mate, reset fuel, reset fuel, and you'll be all clear on the exit. All. Wasn't entirely happy with the way the car was turning. Lowndes, who I bumped incidentally a little bit earlier on, was frustrated by understeer on both tyre sets yesterday. But after practice three, I got about one second with him. He said, yeah, much better, much better. So good. I think he'll be in better shape now this afternoon than the grid position indicates. And he's very good at conserving the tyre now. So to come in as early as Craig's chosen with Ludo and the guys in terms of strategy, He's very good at tyre conservation, so look for Lowndes. He's way down at 24th with Mostert behind him at 25th at the moment after those stops. But look through the course of this race, 39 laps, 125 kilometres for him to move forward. So Wink Cup leads from Pai, McLaughlin, Winterbottom, Courtney, Van Gisbergen, Rick Kelly, Todd Kelly, Garth Tander, Will Davison. That's your top 10. We're on board now with Mark Winterbottom looking back at James Courtney. Courtney, you can see, he's actually had a pretty healthy battle here with Winnebottom. He's made a move. He's up the inside at Turn 4, the end of Wakefield Street. Very good pass. Been working on him for a while. Meantime, Michael Caruso's come in as well. Oh, in here is Van Gisbergen. Puts him in an awkward position when he gets up here to Turn 6. Have to straddle that exit curb. It's very much a one-line trick through this corner here, through 7. Uh, just back on the topic of Jason Bright, who we saw a moment ago. He's looking for more rotation in that car this morning. It, he, it was Yesterday was weird for him as we go back on board here uh, with Chaz Mostert. This is all the second gear stuff up through turns four, five and six. Very bumpy up here. Very easy to burst the car into wheel spin and aggravate and agitate those rear tyres. But Bright felt that he undershot on the so soft tyre, but he felt the behaviour of the hard tyre was better than he expected, so in both cases, it wasn't really what he was looking for. And when Neil talks about looking for more rotation, you actually want the car to turn better in the middle of the corner, as Van Gisbergen now, the replay for you of getting down the inside of Mark Winterbottom at turn nine, gets it done cleanly. Rick Kelly now putting a fair bit of pressure onto the back of car one. 
Martin Winterbottom. And I was talking to Tim Edwards earlier today about this car. And he said, we know we're not really great on these sorts of street circuits. We're better in the big, fast corners. And all we're going to do is just be conservative. So let's have a look at these margins. It's out to 2.38 seconds. Wind Cup over Pi. Scotty McLaughlin is in third place. James Courtney, Shane Van Gisbergen, Mark Winterbottom, and then the Kelly brothers are seventh and eighth. Panda and Davison, ninth and tenth. Handy little margin that Wind Cup's got over Pi now. That's the opportunity now to just watch what's going on in the mirror. And he's actually opened that a little bit just in the last couple of laps. It was sitting pretty much static at around about a second or thereabouts. So that's a nice gain. It, it certainly is. That was, as you said, roughly it went from 1.1 back to 0.7, then out to 1.4, but it's basically one second over the last three laps. It's now 2.68. So Wing Cup is not being conservative. The car behind, eyes forward. So that's David Couchy reading the gap, and that's the signal. That's the that's the tone that he always has. When he's got his head down like that, copy, get on with it. Every lap that he achieves, every 3.22 kilometres that he banks on this tyre set, shortens up the run on the incoming tyre set, which means he's got more firepower. He's spreading the wear load and the stress load across two tyre sets in a more even fashion. And what you'll have to do, folks, is now focus on the Van Gisbergen Wing Cup scenario in the Red Bull Garage because they'll have to be on different strategies. So if the safety car comes out, it doesn't impact Wing Cup and Van Gisbergen. At the moment, Van Gisbergen's in fifth and he would be hurt by that. So Wing Cup currently leading with a 2.7 second margin. The fellas are just uh, looking at this timing screen at HRT and looking at James Courtney's uh, line of, of times that they've got there, the one where he passed. Um, oh, he, wasn't there, he, he just got past just a minute ago. He lost a bit of time there, but the rest of his times very consistent, all within only a few hundreds of a second, which would make you think he's driving to a time, isn't he? He's looking to, to lengthen out as best he can the life of these tyres, like expecting that he's probably going to go a bit longer. And the guys in front of him look to be doing exactly the same thing. Just walked in on a conversation at Pro Drive Racing Australia between Chris O'Toole and some of the mechanics. The suggestion, I'm not sure of this, the suggestion based on the hand movements is four tyres, car one, four tyres. Now they've taken some out into the lane now. They look like they're standing by with four for Mark Winterbottom. He's in. They're laying up in position now for the reigning champion. who has been hurting in the last couple of laps because Courtney got by, as did Van Gisbergen. So they may have slight variations in the incoming pressures to deal with that. Maybe a little adjustment. So they've gone for four. There's Lowndes coming off turn 14. He'll easily round him up. Frosty's doing 40 k's. Lowndes is well over 200. And Ludo was on the radio a moment ago saying to Craig, just drive to the feel of the car. Just do the best you can with what you've got. He was the first in, remember, Craig Lowndes. Three and a half seconds is the gap. Wind cup to Pi. McLaughlin still sitting in third place, but he has actually tightened the margin up. So if anything, it's Scott Pye that could have lost a bit of ground because the cushion to McLaughlin is diminishing as well. We'll keep a very close eye on that. Courtney, as Greg Murphy suggested, potentially driving to a number at the moment. So pit stop completed now for Mark Winterbottom. All four tyres for him. That bucks the recent trend where we've seen people putting rears only on. He's got the inside curb there. Uh, you see the front left corner of the car bounce in protest, and it actually brought temporarily up a little bit of smoke there as it bottomed out. Anyway, let's make sure we use that one. There's not too much going on. There's a fair bit behind it, we should be most of Have a look at the out. gantry, too, at Red Bull. They've oh, got a very here, different mate. gantry. It's oh, okay. very Formula 1-esque, okay, two mate. prongs, Clear and it go. shortens up the Clear. amount of lead and minimises the potential for the leads Clear. to be caught in the rear wing Clear. end plate. So nice stop for Shane Van Gisbergen. And I had a look at that. I said to Roller, wow, there's a bit of engineering and money in this. He said, yeah, I think, I think it's got its own ECU. <laughs> Actually, uh, engine control unit. It's a carbon fibre and aluminium and rod ends. And anyway, I hope it works for them. So it's there's Lowndes. the teammates effectively. Now Lowndes is all over the back of Shane Van Gisbergen and Shane won't make it easy. This is the first inter garage rivalry test that we've witnessed for 2016 and Lowndes has got the crosshairs on the back of car number 97 at the moment and Lowndes knows that whilst his tyres are warm it'll take 
half a lap for Shane to get up to speed. So he wants to pounce, but he may have got away with it, Van Gisbergen, because he got off turn seven quite well. And as long as he doesn't do anything too outlandish on the turning point here, we're looking at this. So big, fast turn eight, he gets through there nicely on the opening lap. So very clever, very good race craft there by Van Gisbergen to get through that phase. Courtney, yeah. Yeah, once he normalises those tyre temps and pressures, then Shane's going to be in better shape. And uh, now in the second half of that lap, you can see it. Four wheels and tyres for 22. And I think four tyres is the smart move. Soft tyres, even the front tyre still works very, very hard. So for two seconds in, the, in their I, pit, I I'd have four tyres yeah, every time. Maybe a second or two difference stationary, but I wouldn't mind betting that when you plot the time across the laps from here to the end of lap number 39, you'd be begging for, for a little bit of extra grip. Exactly. Oh, big curb hop there for Van Gisberg. I don't know whether it's actually shown. It didn't come up. So there's always a little bit of inaccuracy there in terms of the curb hop. And some of the things that we talk about all the time about what your tyre choice, when Winterbottom, for instance, put four tyres on, he may have been complaining slightly of understeer. So you need a bit of tyre quality. And you look at that and you say, OK, righto, that makes, in terms of your overall speed, that makes a difference to the car balance. So that's why Winterbottom probably put the four tyres on versus the earlier guys with only two tyres. Then the other part that you need to consider is what does the balance like further down the road? What does it look like in 15 laps, which is very important in terms of forecasting the balance? Guys are just uh, watching that, that stop for Shane Van Gisbergen. There was actually a little fumble on the right-hand front, which probably cost him between half a second and a second. And uh, so he got away finally. Scott McLaughlin in on a bit of an angle for his pit stop. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Murph, we just have to step in there because Scott Pye had a fumbled stop there. They lost ground with car number 17. That was key because Pye and McLaughlin were in this battle. The positions have now switched around. McLaughlin is out, and uh, something awkward occurred there at Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske. We were on the high shot, but that definitely cost a couple of seconds. But I reckon they also dropped that car with the refueling rig still in. I oh, think. trouble here for Tim Slade, Freightliner Racing. Witness marks on the road suggest that he's gone in with a fair degree of pace there at the moment. This is one of the What's new... What's happening, mate? Can you restart it? one of the new switch arounds in 2016. Check so let's this. have a look at see what happened here with Scotty Pye. And if they're still coupled up with the refueling hose and they drop that car. Yep. Then that could be an issue for them. Well, here we, here we go. No, the fuel's out. Oh, good. So all it was was a fumbled stop because they hadn't actually got the wheel torqued correctly on the left rear. We were focused on the refueling coupling because had it still been in the dry brake nozzle on that car, then that's potentially a penalty. Here's the lead up. In with a handy margin. Strolling along nicely at the moment. Wink up on the soft tyre. Second set of softs goes on. Four Beautiful wheels start. and tyres. Military All precision. Gold. Rick Kelly's in. Garth Tander's in. David Reynolds is in. Heimgart is in. Tim Blanchard's in. Blanchard was in the ice bath prior to the race. So Rick Kelly in 15 out in front of Tander here at the moment. Safety car just to hold. And the safety car's on standby at the moment as well. The Lexus safety car. Lexus with us again in 2016. And that's because of the Tim Slade issue. Still awkwardly parked. I can hear the voice of race director Tim Schenken in the background. Can't quite work out where he is. That's the end of the straight into turn nine. So locked it left hand front runs down the escape road and then but from not to be able to move it again you can't reverse and we'll have a monstrous flat spot on that front left out goes the lexus rcf safety car weird moment there for tim slade our first safety car now what has this done strategically todd kelly's the leader of the race will davison is in behind. They've actually reacted and they're in, as you can see. Fabian Coulthard follows. So you don't want to be stranded. So for those who haven't stopped, go, 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 this is now the pivotal time in this race because they've all got to get this done before everyone forms up behind the Lexus safety car. 
worked out handy for Wind Cup because he was Here able go, to get the maximum out of that first tyre set. Get in, do his stop, and away he goes. Cool go, 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 out go, in go, front go. of Davison. Oh, yeah, that was close then with young Cam Waters and Pitha. Look at this. Even now the teammates with Fabian Coulthard and Scott Pye. So that was a race to the control line. And that pit stop really cost Scott Pye, Neil. So Jamie Wincup has stopped, taken on four wheels and tyres. Safety car's got control of the field. So Scott Pye has gone from second so Wink Cup continues to lead. Scott Pye was second with McLaughlin in behind. Pye's now back in 11th. And Courtney Van Gisbergen, McLaughlin, Kelly, Lount, Winterbottom, Rick Kelly. It's Todd Kelly in fifth in car seven. Rick Kelly, eighth, Tander, Coulthard, and Pye. Now Van Gisbergen. Uh got a benefit out of two tyres over four. So that's going to give me a track position. We're joining Tim Slade here on board with that car. I can't so work out what's happened to that. It's you like it's a good jam. Rate. You don't have to go on the trailer. What's happening there? We can't quite see on the footage. No. Stay in the car, mate. You stay in the car, you can keep on driving. You can continue and get some points. I reckon there might be a drama with the left front of that car. I know that the... It was a... Make sure, you stay with the car, mate. Make sure you stay with the car. I'm just you trying to come back without the car. I'm trying to work out why it's stranded because. We're going to keep going. We can keep driving. Listen, listen, listen to this. What are you doing? What? What? What are you doing? I don't need to go on the truck. I don't need to go on the truck. Tim Slade, very animated. I don't need to go on the truck. So no words required for an hour in here so you can see and hear just how frustrated Tim Slade is that he's ended up on the flatbed truck. This is a brand new car and uh, we saw the replay before on the run down to the hairpin at turn nine. Big lock up front left brake, couldn't release it and then got into an awkward situation where he tried to flick the car around, couldn't find reverse in the process. Have a look at these rejoins in that last group of pit stops as well because there was traffic everywhere. Imagine trying to thread your way into this with approaching cars, blue flags being waved to warn of oncoming uh, traffic and um, you know the safety cars out everyone's bursting at the seams to get to that safety car line in front of the other guy and that's the key there and here's the freight line of racing entry unfortunately on the way back into the pit lane we'll get to the bottom of that for you because i really don't know why it's stranded it, it may have had a gear selection problem that when he went to spin it around he couldn't get reverse I, I just can't work out why and as you can see tim is still in the car he certainly didn't want to be dragged up onto the flatbed he wanted to be either towed back or it's or just push back out onto the track engage first gear and drive away i'm just not sure why it was stuck in the runoff area Uh, now, James Courtney also changed all four, but just a reminder that Shane Van Gisbergen uh, didn't. He only just did the two, but I'll just double-check that. But in um, any case, McLaughlin has dropped back a little in that order. And we're back behind the Lexus safety car. And it's pretty much been fixed in terms of the disruption there with Tim Slade on the flatbed on the way back to the pits. Jamie Winkup currently leads, Murph. Yeah, guys, just uh, with Tim Syndrome quickly. Uh, disappointing situation there with uh, Scotty Pye when he came in for that stop. The car was dropped, but 
uh, right or oh, left rear wheel wasn't quite on. Is that right? Yeah, without a doubt, it could have been worse. But yeah. um, you know, when these races, you have to execute both on Friday and on Saturday. So um, you know, we'll continue to learn that the race isn't over. But uh, yeah, it's certainly unfortunate for Scott. Well, it, it comes into it where you know that, that whole team structure really has to play dividends. It's not just about the driver out there, is it? Without a doubt, there's a lot of the guys that haven't worked together before, and uh, at some point in time, we got to continue to work on it. So uh, you know, without a doubt, we need to execute. But um, these guys are still learning together. Absolutely. Good luck. Thank you. I'm with the Red Bull Racing Australia team manager, Mark Dutton. We were just wondering, was there an issue, maybe a minor one, the safety cars probably uh, corrected things now, for Shane Van Gisbergen. I think I saw the boys tightening one of the lines for the rattle guns. Was there an issue? Uh, it was mainly he just sort of overshot the box a little bit, so slowed our stop, but uh, he, he got out on the track, did some fast times and, and sort of made up for it. Uh, and then, yeah, the boys just checking everything over. First race of the year, you know, belts and braces. Can I just confirm with you two, he did four tyres or two? Four on both cars. There you go, thanks. Cheers, mate. Hey guys, also, um, I went and saw Alistair McVeigh before uh, at HRT. You know, I was talking about how the consistent James was trucking along there with those times, but when Shane Van Gisbergen decided to pit, he was the guy that was directly behind James, they had to react to that, so they were definitely in quicker than what they had anticipated. Yeah, so you have to play to the people you're racing, don't you? That's the, I know that sounds an obvious statement, but when you're in a battle like this, you work out who's actually fast, and you've then got to say, right, oh, do I play with them at the same stock strategy? Or do I embark on my own, which Wing Cup did a little bit. He ran further into the race, and it was a great pit stop by Red Bull Racing Australia as we get to the end of the safety car period and a restart now for Wing Cup leading the field. He's got control. There can be overlapping after the apex of the final turn but there can't be any passing until beyond the control line. We're racing once more. Wing Cup leads over Courtney. Courtney searching for his third straight victory in the Clipsal 500, which is delivered on a Sunday. He's been very quick here in recent years. It's a track that he loves. And he's the meat in the Red Bull sandwich at the moment. Slade's car at the back of the paddock. Wind Cup, Courtney, Van Gisberg and McLaughlin. Not a great restart there for Lowndes. Lowndes lost a lot of time versus Todd Kelly. He's made a little bit up now through four and five, but he, he lost about 40 or 50 metres on the way in there. And remember that fantastic battle last year with James Courtney and Shane Van Gisbergen. Well, this one shapes up again now with Van Gisbergen in behind Courtney, but Courtney has got his eyes on because he wants to get to the back of Jamie Winkup. He'll look down the inside here. Winkup moves it over. That's exactly the right thing to do. He knew that he was vulnerable. Jamie's got tyres that are two laps younger than James. Not really a big significant difference, but they're pretty much on the same strategy, therefore, in terms of tyre age and fuel load. It's a very tricky left-hander there, and you use all of the road, all of the exit curve. In fact, there's more grip over the back of the curve. There's a piece of concrete you aim the car for, and that's why the cars are so close to the fence there, as they all use the motorbike berm. The exit curve out of turn 14, leading onto the start finish straight. Wing Cup leads by 0.5 of a second over Courtney Van Gisbergen, McLaughlin, Todd Kelly, Lowndes, Winterbottom, Rick Kelly, Garth Tander, Fabian Coulthard, and his teammate Scott Pye. That was pretty willing when the safety car came out and the two teammates from DJR Team Penske fired into turn one there together with Pye and Coulthard. They almost made contact. That would have been for Tim Sindrick and Jonathan Gibson and everybody, and Dick Johnson down there in the bunker. That would have been a, a willing moment. As you can see there, the little gap that Wing Cup's been able to forge. Blanchard down the inside of Heimgarten. That runs him wide at turn seven, pushes him wide. Now Heimgarten will rejoin here, and so will Perkat. So he's stuck in the Lucas Dumbrell motorsport sandwich. Now the lead car here at the 150 oh. metre mark has right of way. This is one of the things that was discussed in the driver's briefing and that was the tiniest of margins when the three of them were trying to sort all that out then. That was tight. So the loss for Pi I've been analysing, it's about four or five seconds extra in that fumble pit stop. So this is the pole sitter who was battling at the sharp end of town, who now finds himself outside the top 10 from the tiniest little error in the pit lane. There he is with his teammate from the chopper. But it's all about the complete performance. 
Penske Racing from all around the world. They've had 16 Indy 500 wins. They've got an unbelievable pedigree, and these are the things that, as time goes by, will improve their act. They've obviously gone to two cars. They've expanded the organisation, and as a consequence, there's going to be a few little fumbles, and they need to minimise those in the course of the year in terms of consistency if they're going to be genuine championship contenders. So does this man. So does Van Gisbergen. One of the things that affected him last year was the lack of consistency. The discipline at Red Bull Racing Australia will help his championship chances, and he's doing a very good job to start the season at the moment. The V8 Supercars category technical manager Frank Adamson just said to me that the Freightliner Commodore is not allowed to rejoin. That must be a source of frustration for you, Tim. What happened? Uh, yeah, we just had our stop, and um, yeah, I think sort of second lap after the stop, and we're struggling a little bit with the sort of break breaks the weekend, and uh, locked the left front there into into the um, turn nine, and uh, sort of went down the escape road and. I didn't really want to sort of burn up the rears too much with a with a big flick spin, so I did a half ass flick spin and uh, yeah, didn't quite get around. And then uh, yeah, I couldn't couldn't uh, get reverse there. The, the cable that we sort of used to lever, we sort of depress that and try and push the stick forward. Should should get reversed, but uh, yeah, wasn't sort of getting enough of the cable. And then um, yeah, I didn't want them to put me up on the truck, but um, yeah, they they did and. Uh, that race is over, so um, yeah, I guess we start a bit higher up in the next one, and uh, yeah, everything was sort of not going too bad. So hopefully, uh, yeah, you know, we can finish up the day a bit stronger in the second race. Tough debut at Brad Jones Racing for Tim Slade. Good luck for race two. It's yeah, certainly frustrating for him, Adelaide boy, here earlier in the week with family, and uh, it's funny how all roads lead back to things that niggle up early in the weekend. He said to me after practice one and two, I'm having weird stuff going on with the brake bias because not only is he finding it hard to reach, it's a rotary adjusted down to the right-hand side of his hip, but he said, on the one hand, I'm locking rears, but I've got too much inside front locking as well, which will actually be as much about handling as it is about brakes, but the little telltale was there from first practice yesterday so last lap by the way we cup was two tenths of a second faster than james courtney it was a 21 7 plays a 21 9 so he does have a little bit of pace in hand but what's evident at the moment is that both those guys have got pace over the next group as well and and when you look at their best laps there's a two tenth staggering in it as well this is a cruel game but the simplest thing of not being able to get reverse gear puts you out of race one for the season. So as you said, wing cut now almost out to one second gap over Courtney. And we're gonna stay on board now. Scott Pye, turn it up, check this out. This is a great racetrack. Tander down the inside of Winterbottom here. This is for position number seven. So Frosty's car and balance not to his liking at the moment on the soft tyre. So Tander looks very, very strong. We've seen this trait last year as well. As these races tend to progress, his lap speed towards the back end of many of last year's races, he was equivalent to the fastest on the racetrack. Sometimes he was the fastest. It's Wind Cup, 1.1 seconds over Courtney, then Van Gisbergen, followed by McLaughlin, followed by Todd Kelly, Craig Lowndes. There's five seconds covering those top six cars. Hey guys, you're just talking about the speed of Tando. Obviously, James Courtney has some speed too, and I'm not sure if it's played in the hands or not. That undercut may have played well for them. It wasn't so obvious because of that safety car that came out. But uh, Shane Van Gisbergen forced HRT's hands with Courtney. And potentially, when he put those tyres on, a little bit of gain he made uh, during before that safety car might have given him that advantage over Scott McLaughlin, which has catapulted him right into second position. So that car has some good speed. Fabian Coulthard on screen here at the moment. Car number 12, Shell Helix. One of the big changes in our new season, this combination. What a great start for them yesterday, but it's amazing what difference 24 hours can make in this caper. Suddenly, 
he's the lead car in this group. He's in 10th position and right behind him at the moment, if you looked out the rear bumper, you'll see his teammate. Here's Cam Waters down the inside of Jason Bright. That was very close to a little rub. May have even been a touch there. That's for 17th position currently. Chris Kittler is the next car there in the ice break. Super Black Racing entry in behind turn 11. 1.4 seconds now, wink up to Courtney. And I'm just looking at all, Neil, the, the balance and the look of the winner bottom car. It's got too much entry understeer. It's certainly not pointy enough at the front. It's not agile enough. He has to slow it down too much to get it to the 90 degree corners. And that's what's really hurting him as Tanda went down the inside of turn nine. 21-9, last lap for Garth Tanders, his fastest lap in the race. So that is what we're talking about before, the way his car's improving. So Waters down the inside here of Jason Bright, turn four. He's on the outside now for five, but if he can stay there, he's ideally positioned. It's not able to be done. Close, no cigar. Ooh, a, bump there. a little bit of a touch-up. They would. There was an ongoing discussion yesterday, as there was in last year's championship, about the whole notion of bump and run. Jason Barguana, the investigating officer and driving standards observer, will allow some of it, but not to the point where you rattle somebody out of position. Tanda now, again, strong at turn nine. This time it's Craig Lowndes that he pulls the knife on, and he's moved up into position number six. Very good manoeuvre down there. He's very good under brakes, Tanda, but the only way he can get that manoeuvre made is to be ultra committed at turn eight. So he's come off turn eight, got the run, had the momentum, and fired down the inside. Craig Lowndes experienced enough to not fight when Tander's coming at him. There was a lot of energy, a real heartfelt applause then when Garth Tander moved into sixth position. And with the team principal at the Holden Racing Team, Adrian Burgess, his car is coming on strong car too. Oh yeah, look, both cars are flying along. Uh, GT was a little bit out of position at the start, but uh, as you can see, there's plenty of green boxes on the monitor. So yeah, we're trucking along at the moment. Do you think JC is going to be in a position to attack Jamie before the end of the race? Oh, look, I'd like to think so, but, you know, I've got to be honest at the moment. Uh, he's quicker than everybody else, apart from the bloke in front of him. So, uh, look, it's first race of the year. We'll, uh, we're happy where we are at the moment. That's a good start. Cheers, mate. Thanks. He needs to find about a tenth and a half, maybe even two tenths in consistent lap speed to be able to do that. But you never know. He's got a 1.7 second margin here. Here's Cam Waters making a clean run down the inside of Jason Bright. So he got it done. Nice pass. Turn. Yeah, Bright tried the crisscross, but very awkward you come through this next left-hander at 10. Let's go on board here with Cam, look and listen. Just slithered down there. And uh, here's another replay of the Monster Falcon. Looks like he might just clout that inside curb a little bit. There's a bit of junk there on the road too. Oh, it's actually just a bit of a... Previous victim. Yeah, somebody's left a little deposit there. There's plenty of them down there at turn one. 1.6 seconds, static gap at the moment. Wind come over Courtney, it's not much. Then Van Gisbergen, so Red Bull one and three at the moment. Scott McLaughlin still sitting there in fourth place. Todd Kelly's having a mighty run ahead of Garth Tander. That margin at the moment is one and a half seconds. We'll keep an eye on that because the way Tander's been breaking down into turn nine and chipping away at both Craig Lowndes and uh, Mark Winterbottom, I'd suggest that uh, Todd could be the next on his list. But Todd's got good pace at the moment. That'll be a taller order. Rick Kelly's got good pace behind Mark Winterbottom too, Neil. So he's put a lot of pressure on. He's only 0.6 of a second behind. And as you said, both of the Nissans very well balanced. And I was really encouraged earlier in the race when Todd Kelly and Garth Tander were having that healthy exchange with the engine speed from the Nissan Altima. On board now with our champion from 2015, Mark Winterbottom, just fighting a little bit of understeer at the slower stuff. Just on that mark of coming to uh, the Pro Drive bunker, he hasn't got a smile on his face at the moment, Tim Edwards. Is he fighting a little bit of understeer in car one? Uh, yeah, he's a little bit, yeah. Uh, we're also fighting against you. Safety car didn't, didn't come at the ideal time for us, but anyway, that's, that's, that's the brakes. But yeah, car's not great. Give us an overarching thing on all four cars. Was it just safety cars you're talking about, or are there struggles for the other boys as well? Oh, look, I don't know what the others might be struggling with. Frosty's the only one who's really made comment about the balance of the car. Um, you know, Cam's got fresher tyres on. He saw him just get past Friday then, so he's kind of had probably played a little bit in, in his hands a little bit, but, you know, the, everyone was so close, and it sort of, yeah, it didn't work in our favour, that's for sure. Let you get back to it. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, mate.
interesting just to reflect on things for these guys, in particular Winterbottom, who we ride with at the moment at this location. Hasn't been a happy hunting ground in many respects. He hasn't had a race win, hasn't had a pole. He's had three podiums. The best has been a couple yeah, of second placings, but Jason Gray. So we missed the first part of that, so there'll be a little bit of input coming back from Frosty because he'll be starting to think now about what to do for the next race, even though they're a different tyre set. So, um, yeah, it just hasn't quite worked out for him here over the years, but what's interesting about his approach now, he's really battling to get that thing turned and stopped down there. Rick Kelly's all over him. There's his brother, Todd. Car number seven's currently in fifth position. He'll lose a spot here in a heartbeat, Mark Winterbottom, but he'll be also smart enough to know that if he doesn't have the firepower, you move then to points mode. So you just got to finish. You can't afford to get bashed up too much by the pack. You just have to try and tell Jason what it is you're looking for for the next one and live to fight another day rather than bin it. Tim Edwards and I were having a truth serum session earlier <laughs> and one of the things that we said was that if Mark can't be fast enough, as in Frosty, then to finish seventh or eighth in the opening race is still a good job in terms yes. of the year's performance. And that's what he did last year. Roughly 60% of the time he was on the podium. So that level of consistency won the championship for him. And today, if you haven't got the fastest car, which he clearly hasn't, he's been haunted at the moment by Rick Kelly, you've just got to finish up there somewhere. Scotty Sinclair is watching on. Uh, Todd Kelly doing a pretty handy job there in the, the top five at the moment. TK starting off the account for the year. Oh, not, not too bad. Yeah, he is. He's setting the pace uh, amongst the Altimers at the moment in P5, which is good. It's good to see him have a good battle with Garth earlier on there and, and get away with it. I was just uh, saying to the guys maybe 12 months ago that we wouldn't have been able to do that. So we're pretty positive about how our cars are racing today and uh, obviously looking forward to the season ahead with a reasonable start today. Yeah, uh, Rick as well um, sort of didn't quite work out with that safety car situation for him, but it's looking like both those guys have got a fair bit of pace going on at the moment and Caruso's not far behind. Yeah, and, uh, and Michael and Rick probably lost out on the safety car a little bit, but uh, that's the way it goes. But if we can get Todd home in fifth at, um, in this one, see how we go on the hard tyre. And uh, But you know, we're, we're pretty positive at the moment. Good stuff, buddy. Thanks, mate. He's got a really healthy battle going with Garth Tander. I said there's a fair bit of history from old Holden Racing days, Holden Racing Team days versus the HSB dealer team when it was red versus orange. Tander and Todd used to have some pretty wild exchanges and this is another one as Todd Kelly on that lap did a 22.72, Garth Tanner did a 22.62. So one tenth of a second gain there. Todd Kelly's on target for his best Clipsal result since his win in 2007. So he's got some form around this place, he just hasn't been in a position to show it. And you've got Nick Perkat down the inside of his teammate Andre Heingartner. He left him very little space on the exit of turn four, but he's got it done. Heimgartner yesterday had a misfire. They changed the coil pack on the car. They went uh, through a whole range of injector changes as well. They basically changed everything that you conceivably think of. Peter Wallace was responsible for managing that. They got the thing fixed. So Andre's actually rocking along quite nicely there. Those fellas are 21st and 2nd at the moment. That's Lee Holdsworth in the Preston Higher Entry. But that's always a worry when you see the two team cars so close. Uh, absolutely. The funny thing was, I, I spoke to Nick Perkat about it. Nick said, well, Andre's got a misfire, but even with the misfire, his engine's better than mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Perkat was very unhappy. I think I said earlier in the day, uh, broke a rocker early. They're actually going to, Peter's going to change that engine tonight. So we come out now to two and a half second gap over Courtney, Van Gisbergen, McLaughlin, Todd Kelly with Garth Tander right behind him. Craig Lowndes still got good speed. Mark Winterbottom is still in front of Rick Kelly. Fabian Coulthard. Will Davison's right up onto the back of him too. And here's Tanda. Only car in the 21s now is Win Cup. Everybody else is in the 22s. And when you get to about the midfield, they're then in the 1 minute 23. So Win Cup is still in a league of his own out there at the moment for lap speed. And that's resulted in a cushion of 2.7 seconds over Courtney. Just in the last couple of laps, you can see that squeeze on a little bit at the moment. Courtney just starting to hurt a little to maintain that sort of pace. Here's Tanda thinking about it as he's done before down here at 90 he's diagonals to the inside and he's got him. Good job. Garth Tanda moves up now into fifth position and but response in the garage at the Holden Racing Team is just a wry smile. But a good job also by Todd Kelly. He knew then, he knew if Garth was up there and he turned it in they were going to make contact. So Todd had the choice to continue to cover or to leave it out on the race line and to allow Garth down the inside, which obviously he did. 
and both guys live to fight another day. So Tanner moves to fifth, Todd Kelly sixth. The issue of the Holden Racing team in the recent past has been trying to settle down the back of the car and uh, that's been unnerving Tanda more than Courtney. Here's the replay. And after the Winton test, I said to Garth, do you reckon that you're on top? And he said, yeah, maybe. I think we're a little bit better. And then through this weekend, he's been talking about making just small incremental gains. They've made quite a number of engineering changes with those cars coming into the new season. So at the present time, they are second and fifth, the Holden Racing Team entries. And often we talk about the different styles of cars. So throughout the course of last year, the Holden Racing Team cars were very good at the street circuit. So the tight radius corners, they were very competitive. At the faster, wider radius places, they really struggled, which is the total opposite with Pro Drive Racing Australia. Their cars are very good at Phillip Island, Sydney Motorsport Park, those sorts of corners. Just watching where your favourite driver is in the field at the moment. We'll watch them all go through. That gap, by the way, first to seconds out to 3.1 seconds. Here's a little margin back to Chris Pither. He's 18th. So the various little battle packs up and down the field. This lot, it's a little calmer back here. Now we're looking at Perkat Heimgartner, Holdsworth, followed then by uh, Blanchard and uh, Aaron Russell there. He's got a fair bit of nose damage on that car. I had to sort of stop and look at it to understand what had gone on, but he's had a fair old whack. There's the margin. First to second. Win cup over Courtney. He's got it out to 3.2 seconds. He's eking it away all the time at the moment, Win cup. Seven laps remaining in this race. Win cup came to the weekend with nine race victories on the streets of Adelaide. Had a remarkable run here, four Clipsal 500 victories. And in terms of pole positions, unsurpassed as well with seven of them. Possibly could have been eight yesterday had he not been forked. But even then has come away with two front row starts this weekend. And this fellow on screen at the moment fighting hard for his first Red Bull podium, Shane Van Gisbergen. He's got the lurk, the air filter is somewhat blocked at the moment. And he's fighting hard with Scotty McLaughlin third and fourth. This is a pretty good battle because McLaughlin's taken some ground off Shane over the last few laps. And young New Zealanders, there's Gary Rogers, who's celebrated such a great career of over 50 years of operating in this business. One of the best blokes in pit lane. And he loves the thought of bringing this young charger, Scott McLaughlin, through the sport. He's done a great job for Gary. He's done a great job for Volvo since their inception. And this is a really good battle between these two guys. He gets to wear the groovy pass that you've got, which says the Hall of Fame. Hey, you got it. That's, that's a very elite group. When you're not looking, I just sneak around with yours to try and feel better. But uh, he was a deserving victor last year at the Gala Awards dinner in December in Sydney following the final round. Gary Rogers, an incredibly popular figure. And here's his man, Scott McLaughlin, Volvo S60, Wilson Security Racing. He's currently in fourth place, and that's the rear bumper of Shane Van Gisbergen's Holden Commodore in front there. Both just a whisker over seven seconds off the lead, and between them officially it's 0.7 of a second. Let's listen to the Volvo through eight. I'd be quite happy to listen to those flat plane crank engines all day. It's a sad indictment on what music I like to listen to. But yeah, that, is, that is another point, we should talk about that offline. The other part that's really important when you look at the guys in the separate bunkers just guiding them home is that this tyre has not degraded anywhere near to the tune we thought. No. Still doing 22s. But some people are talking about it. So uh, track temperature at the moment, 37. Correction, air temperature is 37. Track temperature is 44. And I'm beginning to hear ripples on the radio. My rear tyres are, are starting to hurt. So five laps remaining. Wind Cup still the one with lap speed. Three and a half seconds is the margin. That was uh, the respective bunkers there before as well. It was Dean Cowling at uh, Wilson Security, Gary Rogers Motorsport in the GRM bunker. And uh, we we're in the Red Bull bunker there as well with Grant McPherson, who last year engineered Craig Lowndes. This year his charge is Shane Van Gisbergen. On board with Will Davison, who's right up in behind Coulthard. He's made ground on him. Just got to get yourself into a a position to flow the car off turn seven, be close enough at turn eight, don't hurt the aero too much. There's your gaps, half a second, 0.4, not much on the last lap. 
But once you get behind like this, very hard for the aero and the effect it has on the balance of your car as you turn into turn eight. 245k approach speed, 215 kilometers an hour mid corner speed. And that gap's too much. So you've got to work too hard then under brakes, which he's made a lot of ground on Fabian to get down to turn nine, 60k out of there. To run through this parklands area down to a critical left-hander at turn 11. Use all the curb and then all the exit curb. Flag, uh, triple eight, overuse of the turn two curb. So Craig Lowndes has been warned now about using that turn two curb too aggressively. Here he is on screen. Bad sportsmanship flag for him. Well, they want to be Pretty careful now. Surface has deteriorated down there as well. You can see the yellow and red flag being shown to drivers on the approach to turn one. 3.58 seconds to gap, wind cup to Courtney, four laps remaining, and uh, Lowndes will have got that message now, both in terms of the visuals of the flag and also been advised on the radio. Richard Holloway, the man in uh, contact with the 33, he's actually just making a little chat with him just there. Hey mate, so just quickly catch up, obviously Scotty lost a, a little bit of his time there. In the pit stop as well, he had to go around Scott Pye to get into his box. Did you guys cost him a bit of time? Yeah, it cost him a little bit, yeah, and probably the two laps we were, he was getting held up. We should have probably dived in a bit earlier, but uh, yeah, we weren't sure on the tie line. Yeah, it looks like uh, um, uh, Mr Courtney managed, to, he got in a few laps earlier and maybe got a little bit undercut, helped by the fact that he was being held up. At the moment though, he's got some really good pace, but obviously the guys in front of him have got some good pace too. Yeah, I think he's got a little bit on Gizzy, but I don't think he's got enough to, to get him unless Gizzy makes a mistake. But yeah, I think they're pretty tight at the moment, sort of trading off each other at the moment. Well, he gets to start from P3 again for the next one, buddy. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Every time I wandered into the Wilson Security Gary Rogers garage, Richard was working on shock absorbers yesterday after we'd remarked watching practice of how hard and high the Volvo was flying over turn two. We said, well, I don't know how cars can cope with that. Well, that car wasn't because it was bending the bottom arm on the uh, front and rear suspension. So uh, they've actually increased the amount of available travel on the shock absorber to try and compensate, made a couple of other changes. But the other thing that Richard said was, it's very line specific, so we just had to say to Scotty, you just can't fly the car like a motocross bike through there, or we ended up with some damage. So uh, a ton and a half flying through the air at that sort of speed, pretty damaging. A new generation of cars, we've got double A arm, front and rear suspension, and as Neil said, those arms cop a huge hiding, because all the force is generated through the spring and shock absorber through into the arm and bending those over the four-wheel off-the-road action we saw yesterday off those curbs very easy to do. Scapey Neil updated the track and ambient temperatures a short time ago. Uh, thanks to Nissan, they've shared with a green pit reporter some other data as well. Uh, temperature inside the cabin of one of their Altimers at the moment, 53 degrees. We've been going for nearly 39 laps. Spare a thought for the drivers in those conditions. And the pit reporters, I reckon you're more likely red than green at the moment there, <laughs> Rusty. But, uh, yeah, it's very, very hot and hard out there. And it's pertinent now to make mention of the fact they do it again. So they come back in now, they'll jump in the ice baths, they'll start to debrief, quickly understand what needs to be done to these cars and then realise that you put the hard tyre on, you go and do it all again, another 125 k's. So it looks as though it's going to be victory here for Jamie Wincup over James Courtney and Shane Van Gisbergen, but there's one or two other little battles here or there that are not totally resolved at the moment. This may be one of them, Fabian Coulthard and Will Davison still locked in combat. This is over position 10. That cabin temperature has actually come back from when we reported it at the start of the race. So as the cars have been running, you get the airflow and the airflow helps the cabin temperature. So often the thing that fatigues you the worst is a safety car. When you've got no car speed or the car speed's reduced, then the airflow is less as we see this continuous battle with McLaughlin just modifying his line under brakes to have a look. Will Davison on the radio saying too much understeer in that car as well. Uh, you and Greg Murphy were in a conversation yesterday about the fact that in this event, there are oftentimes in the helmet where you say, oh, please, please give me a safety car, I just need a rest. And then, of course, when you do slow down to your point, it, the temperature rises and then it's, please, please, can we get back on with it? So, never happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't keep the drivers happy, that's the message. Final lap. A little under three kilometres remaining now for Jamie Wincup. What a way to start 2016 if he can do this. 3.9 seconds the gap over James Courtney, who's well in the game. 
for the third year in a row. There is the gap. You can spot the visual. Shane Van Gisbergen still in third place at the moment, under attack from Scotty McLaughlin. That's a great shot of the proximity of the racetrack to the eastern fringe of the city here. Through the right-hander, out of turn seven, a chance to relax, to stop, pluck a few gears and think about turn eight. It's an approach just over 240 k's. A little rest with the throttle and then committed back on it again. 2.15 in the middle of the corner, accelerating back to 240. And then the speed plummets back to 60 kilometres an hour here. Wing Cup is going to add another key victory on the streets of Adelaide. Exit, turn 11. No space on the right. Still fully committed even in this phase of the race to squeezing out lap time perfection. Last corner here for the Red Bull racer and for the Holden driver, Jamie Wincup. The crowd standing, enjoying every second oh, yeah. of our first race oh, yeah. of the year. And it goes Brilliant. to Jamie Wincup. Good start, guys. Great start. Keep focused. It was a great start. 3.9 seconds win cup to Courtney. Holden 1, 2 and 3. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Excellent job. Yeah. Bring it back, brother. That's how it's done. David Couchy then responding. What an incredible run there from win cup. He was dominant from the start of this race. A fantastic jump off the line and was never headed. It's the eighth time in nine years that he's won the first race of the season. Another emphatic victory for the six-time champion. So looking further down the order as we look at the top three on screen there at the moment, the onboards, and they'll all be feeling the heat. Wind Cup, Courtney Van Gisberg, and then just behind was Scotty McLaughlin, who only missed out by a fraction. It's Anthony McDonald in the Holden Racing Team garage, and here's the victorious Red Bull team. Nice job, Jamie Wind Cup. His last lap was a 1 minute 23.7. He was still a tenth and a half quicker than James Courtney. And there were four or five drivers in the 23s. And then you go back to Craig Lowndes, who was the first stopper to take that tyre set. And he was in the mid-24s at the end. So not a bad recovery for Craig. Ended up seventh and had to stretch those tyres a long way. Copped a little warning along the way for flying across the kerb. Certainly did a very good pitch strategy and drive from James Courtney to come up to second. Van Gisbergen also... A good, tenacious drive to hang in in front of his New Zealand compatriot. Scott McLaughlin in fourth. Garth Tander fifth. Todd Kelly, great job. Great start to the year for Todd and the Nissan Altima and the factory team. And as you said, Craig Lowndes, Mark Winterbottom, Rick Kelly. So two Nissan Altimas in the top ten. Fabian Coulthard, the first of the DJR Team Penske Falcons. Into victory lane big statement to make at the very beginning of the championship season tucked in behind the U-Bet number one sign we're looking down there from the Woodstock chopper and here's Jamie Wincup job done 75 points straight in the bank picking up where he left off in the back half of last year his speed was fantastic he's waiting for them all where are you yeah, boys come on blokes <laughs> come on get on with it here's David Couchy <laughs> Courtney and in the little inter-team games that get played as well first blood Jamie Wincup as Shane Van Gisbergen settles into that outfit too what a very measured what a I mean I keep on saying about his style he's got such great finesse and he looks after the tyre so well and this is the style of circuit you've got to do that with Jamie Winkup, welcome to the first U-Bet Victory Lane for 2016 and your 10th victory here at the Clipsville 500. Congratulations. Thanks, Rihanna. It's pretty warm out there. Um, yeah, we're bringing 88 back this year, so nice to get the, the runs on the board nice and early. Uh, just going to treat every win like it's my last, t you don't, know, you don't know when your last win's going to come, so just treat them all uh, like they're, they're your last. And, but uh, the car was fantastic. Gizzy's obviously, uh, he's very quick as well. He'll make a tune up and... Um, Great to have both Red Bull cars on the podium. Uh, you've got a few grey hairs, but I think you've still got a few wins yeah, in here. Here's some silverware from the girls at Clipsal. James Courtney, I know you love racing around here on the streets of Adelaide. Congratulations, your first podium for 2016. Yeah, Rihanna, it's not a bad way to start the year. Obviously, we want to win, but uh, but no, the car ran well all day. Uh, boys did a great job, job with the strategy. We were able to jump those guys and put in some good hard laps when we had to. So it's uh, yeah, a great way to start the year. 
Um, yeah, congrats to the other blokes and uh, bring on this afternoon. It's a scorcher. So hot in there. It's going to be hard to back up this afternoon and then again tomorrow. Grab yourself your trophy. Go and cool down and get ready for the final race of the day. Shane Van Gisbergen, what a way to start your year at the Red Bull Racing Australia. Congratulations on the podium, two cars. Yeah, thank you. It was pretty hot out there, but um, starting six, got through to the front. Great strategy and car was really good, made some changes. So thanks to Red Bull Racing making it easy for me and uh, try and push ahead in race two as well. Hey, trophy, have some rest. I know you're not feeling the best, but... Um... Best of the Nissan, sixth place for Todd Kelly. That was a uh, that was a hard race, but it's a great result. Good start to the year for you. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. The um, the car had the pace of the uh, the others at times in the race, but I just couldn't hang on to the tyres as good as what the uh, the guys in front of me could. So uh, we went in the conservative approach. We were in a pretty good spot there, so I just looked after him and then uh, had a good battle with Garth early on. But the second time round, I thought I'm going to have to let him go here and and try and get the points. So yeah, we're on the improve and and uh, pretty happy with the car sales car. Let you go and grab a break. Thank you. Thanks. Chad, Chaz Moss, a tough first race out there, mate. Uh, it looks like maybe the tyres on the car weren't to your liking exactly. You're having a bit of a struggle there late in the piece. Yeah, obviously fit it early to try and, you know, truck on, but then that safety car kind of ruined us a bit over a few people. So, uh, yeah, struggle for pace then. Uh, soft tyre, I think we still need to do a little bit of work on the car with, but, but overall, pretty happy to finish a race here at Adelaide. It's always a hard slug out there, so just to get across the finish line is a result in its own. And absolutely, and then we, we, what you got to look forward to is that you are off the front for the next one as well, and your car is good on the hard tyre. Um, mate, how do you feel? Yeah, good, yeah. It's good to have a bit of clear track in front, but, um, yeah, we'll see if we can keep the pace up. How's the body? Yeah, body's good. Just need to cool down a little bit before the next one. Go get it done. Thanks. No doubt. Roaring hot out there at the moment, so a 16th placing there in that first race for Chaz Mostert. And how about Jamie Whitcup? He's the man. He moves his career tally on to 98 victories in V8 supercar competition. Just over three seconds from James Courtney. Van Gisbergen gets his first trophy for Red Bull. Then McLaughlin, Tander, Kelly, Lowndes, Winterbottom, Rick Kelly in the second of the Nissans. And then further back in 10th was Fabian Coulthard. It'll be disappointing for Scott Pye to see his name there in 12th after starting from the pole position frustration with that pit stop. It only dropped about four to five seconds, but it had a profound impact on the results sheet at the end of the day. There's some drama down in the pit garage here with Rick Kelly and the Nissan guys. This is with Scott Sinclair and the team. Have a look at this. This is the passion. It's George Commons, engineer in the background, so... These are those difficult moments when we've got to ask the question about what happened. You were, you were pretty animated, that conversation then with Scotty Sinclair. What's going on? Yeah, in the briefing they said there's going to be no curb strikes on the screen for us. The first time you'll know about it is when someone comes down and they're on the screen, so they gave me a warning. So it's a little bit hard to hear with our radio chat whether that's an official warning or just to be a little careful. So uh, it wasn't an official warning, but it's a different story to what we got told in briefing. So just got to check that communication and, and just find out why in briefing they said it wouldn't be displayed for the teams when it was. So just always technical stuff going on in the background. Didn't really affect our position on the track. Pit stops did a little bit and uh, a couple of minor things in the car. So we fixed that up. Our pace is pretty strong. You worried about the heat coming through the floor? You pointed to your boot a moment ago. No, no, there's no drama with the heat. Just some adhesive on the bottom of the boot from the dead pedal that's uh, moved away with it with the glue. So just little stuff like that. You try and get your foot off the dead pedal and under the clutch and it sticks for a little bit. So you just got to think about that every time you pull your foot under the clutch. But apart from that, it's all good. All right, you're off 14th for the next one. You've got the ice vest on already. What do you do in the break? Try and go and cool down now, bring the core temperature down, get ready to go again. Have a think what we need to do with the car from uh, soft tyre to hard tyre because it's a little bit different. And just try and move a little bit further forward in this one rather than back. You might seem like the nice guy. Got a bit of fire in the belly. Good on you. <laughs> he has. He needs to go and cool down, doesn't he? He's uh, about 17 seconds off the lead when the chequered flag drops. So here's the highlights. Race number one of the championship. There are 33 of them to deliver to you this championship season. And... Uh, Great start for Jamie Wincup. Dropped the clutch, perfect launch, very little in the way of wheel spin. Conversely, Scotty Pye just momentarily bogged a little for Lee Holdsworth at turn four. He got turned around up there and then that set the tone for the balance of the day. Lowndes was the first to stop and grab a tyre set. Pretty remarkable how long he took that tyre, the second set of tyres that came onto that car through until the end of the race. Well, he only put rears on too, so Mostert and Lowndes early trying to jump the queue and do the undercut. There were some great battles through the middle of the of the pack and the early strategy. This hurt 
McLaughlin actually, he was caught up trying to get into the pitch. Slade, this is the reason for the safety car. Lucky Wincock got that stop made just before the safety car came out. Couldn't get reverse gear. Very animated Tim Slade there, who didn't want to go onto the flatbed to go back. At the restart, it was on. Courtney right behind. And as a consequence, Winkup had to do some very speedy laps. And there was a bit of a push and shove there with Dale Wood and Heimgartner out to the fence. But Tanda had great speed. He was coming through the field. He was down the inside of Mark Winterbottom at turn nine, then down the inside also of Craig Lowndes at turn nine. All of them, you see there, Adrian Burgess, Alistair McVeigh, Brian Walker, sure in the background. But this man did it again on the streets of Adelaide. He loves this place. He is very, very accomplished at Clipsal 500. And marching towards his 100th V8 Supercar and Australian Touring Car Championship race victory, Jamie Wincup. He's going to tick that box very shortly. Roland Day and his boss on the pit wall there, first to congratulate. So tremendous performance. Ended up being just a little under four seconds, 3.92 to be precise. Great start to the season for Red Bull. So, they do it all again now. So, a chance for everybody to go in and cool down, think about changes. They now understand precisely what they're dealing with for their cars this afternoon. They'll do it on the Dunlop hard tyre. We'll have another 39 laps to come later this afternoon.